Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the season opener for season two of the European Esports Championship. My name is, of course, Michael Edwards, going to be taking you through the action, as always, here in the EEC. Ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible event and uh, sequences of races that we got coming up for you uh, on League Racing TV in terms of the e e c and i'm not gonna lie i mean the grid is looking very good for tonight very good but before we get into that let's have a quick look at the track of which we'll go racing at here tonight of course it is the home of british motorsport it is the silverstone circuit uh 5.8 kilometers 3.6 miles in length 18 corners two drs zones one down the hangar straight and of course one down the wellington straight as well the home of british motorsport going to be very interesting to see who is going to come out on top of that and of course, let's have a quick look at the calendar over the course of the season. There's a seven race championship with uh, 10 nations uh, partaking in it. And we'll go for the nations in just a moment's time. But obviously, round number one here, we are at the home of British Motorsport. Round number two, next week, we'll be heading to the circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia, Hungary, uh, the Hungar Ring for round number three. And of course, we head to the Temple of Speed. It is Monza for round number four. Round number five sees us head to... The Circuit de Spa of Francochamps uh, at the Belgian Grand Prix. Round number six will take us to the Red Bull Ring uh, in the Austrian uh, in in Austria, and of course uh, we end the season at of course Imola, uh, such an iconic circuit in its own right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, obviously season two after the events in season one. Of course, uh, we did see Team France take home the uh, the championship in season one, and of course they are back to defend their title. Unfortunately, uh, no no Italy this time around, no Germany this time around, and I believe if I remember correctly off the top of my head, um, the, 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 the third team like. Uh, that is gone is gone but you know what we have uh been able to uh to fill out a full a full grid and of course uh let's have a look at the nations of which will be competing and the driver lineup for tonight as we have a quick look now of course it is a team romania in the red bulls with bogdan moldovan and agonize of course uh team finland in the mercedes of course with uh keedan loot and Thomas Laminen in uh, in the Mercedes. The reigning champions, Team France in the McLaren. Of course, uh, Tony Rich and No Grosjean there in the McLaren. Now, of course, we've got Team Netherlands in the Scuderia Ferraris with NLR Lars and TTM uh, just in there in the Scuderia. Team England are in the Aston Martin. Of course, uh, Dylan Warren and Matthew Bassett there representing Team England uh, and of course and then we go to uh, Team Slovenia where of course there's Yone Dovzan uh, stepping back in as well as Marge uh, Kresnik uh, in the Alpines. Hopefully I haven't absolutely butchered your name guys. I, I do apologise. Uh, pronunciations are never really uh, good with me but hopefully I have uh, done a, a decent job there. Uh, in the Williams we have Team Sweden with uh, Leo Lund and Victor Walder. They're in the Williams F1 car. And then, of course, we've got Team Poland with uh, David Lochos and Marcel Biaga. Uh, I, once again, I hope I haven't absolutely butchered your names, guys. But in the Alpha Tauris, it is, of course, Team Poland. And then, of course, we've got Team Norway uh, in the Alpha Romeo, Shazuz Volokongan and ET8 Oscar. Very strong lineup there for Team Norway. And then, of course, Team Denmark then with... Uh, 16 uh Leinhardt and of course Linas Dovzan uh Donovan uh, sorry I should say as we are approaching uh getting underway here for what should be a very interesting qualifying of course we did have uh Silverstone in season one which of course was a incredible race a lot of close action up and down the field and honestly I'm looking for more of the same tonight uh as we just uh had a little look and uh uni doesn't uh not showing up hopefully uh hopefully we can get him in obviously that has just been posted in the uh chat but guys in the stream right now let me know who are your favorites who are you keeping an eye on who's going to be the team that will take the fight to 
uh, team France, of course, uh, coming into the Fend, the championship. Of course, last season, uh, they did take the championship. Of course, it was uh, Team Norway that did finish uh, second in the end. Netherlands did finish third. And, of course, it was Team Italy that finished fourth uh, last time out. And then, of course, Team Romania came on in fifth. Team Germany did come in sixth, but it was uh, Slovenia in seventh, Austria in eighth, and then of course England were ninth, and of course Finland rounded out the final position. But that was last season. This season, though, it's completely different. No Italy, no Germany, no Austria. They have been uh, replaced by, of course, Denmark, uh, Sweden, and of course Poland. So a new dynamic going to be going into this season. And of course, uh, what we're looking to see is that signal of uh, us being able to ready up to go ahead and transfer over to the circuit. But again, let's have a let's have a little look at the uh, at the points uh, at the points uh, system for this championship. So there we go, guys. As you can see, twenty-two points for the race win, eighteen points for second place, fifteen points for third, with twelve points for fourth. And then it goes down in increments of one. So fifth will get eleventh, all the way down to fifteenth. Uh, that will get one singular point. No points for 16th, 17th or 18th or 19th or 20th, obviously. Uh, but what we will have is a pole position point and the fastest lap point. So put it on pole position and making sure you get the fastest lap of the race. Very, very ideal uh, in terms of the uh, championship. As I believe uh, we... <laughs> I believe uh, Yone Dobson uh, is... Honestly, he's doing a mic. He's doing a mic. And we absolutely... I mean, I, I, I understand. I understand. I, I, I've done this many times now where I've overslept. So I, I understand with uh, Yoni Dobson there. Uh, honestly, my kindred spirit right there. Yoni Dobson. We love her. But yeah, that is the point system for the European Esports Championship. Of course, only the top 15 get points. And of course, there's a point for fastest lap and pull position. As we... Wait to see uh, when we will get the ready up line uh, to go into this race. But again, let's have another quick look at the circuit. The Silverstone circuit, of course, 5.8 kilometers, 3.6 miles in length. So many iconic corners as you head through this circuit. Of course, Cops Corner, Turn 9, Maggots, Beckett's Chapel, the Hanger Street, the uh, the Wellington Street, obviously uh, Brooklyn, Luffield. Uh, Abbey Farm Village, uh, Stowe, uh, the Vale Chicane. There's so many very intriguing uh, corners and good overtaking opportunities as well. Of course, down in towards uh, Turn 15 uh, at uh, Stowe and, of course, uh, through Turn uh, turn 3 at the Village. Uh, in towards uh, Brooklyn's as well. You can get a good run out of uh, left field to have a look in towards uh, Cops. And, of course... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can go side by side uh, towards Marcus and Becker. It's not really ideal to be side by side through there, but you can. it can be done. It can be done, but I don't think we'll be seeing many guys uh, going for that here tonight. Uh, but yeah, that is, of course, the Silverstone circuit, the point system, and, of course, the, uh, the driver lineup here for tonight. Uh, we are waiting for uh, UNA Dawson, of course... Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think he'll uh, wake up uh, in time, but he has until uh, five past, which means we are just a minute away before heading into the qualifying session. Guys, let me know in the chat right now who are you predicting for victory here tonight? Obviously, I'm seeing a lot of support for Team Finland in the chat. Obviously, we got Maze in there supporting England and. Honestly, uh, for England uh, this season, as well as Finland, they're going to want to hope that they went better than last season. Because, of course, I mean, Finland, they ended up finishing last. But, of course, uh, I don't think they uh, they put some in a lineup for the last race of the season. So, England ended up uh, getting out of the wooden spoon spot by default in the end. Uh, moving up into ninth place. And both of those uh, nations will definitely be hoping for much better this time around. And... It's gonna be it's gonna be a very intriguing one, guys. Uh, obviously, England, in my opinion, England did underperform uh, last season. So I mean, we we'll have to see how they get on. Of course, in terms of the uh, the lineup uh, here tonight for uh, England, of course, it is of course 
uh, Dylan Warren and Matthew Bassett, who, uh, of course, both of these drivers, very, very capable and are going to be, uh, they're going to be in the mix. They're going to be in the mix. Of course, my eyes are immediately drawn to uh, some of the drivers that we saw uh, last season. Of course, Bogdan Moldovan, an absolute incredible driver. Of course, uh, had many great results last season. Uh, Thomas Lamerson, uh, no, no, Lamanen, sorry, uh, for Team uh, for Team uh, Finland. And of course, uh, Shazu Volokongan. Like, some of these guys are incredible. And it looks like we are just about getting ready to go into the action, into qualifying. Guys, who is going to be able to pick up the first point of the season? Will it be Team Romania? Will it be Team France? Will it be Team Netherlands? Will it be Team England? Time will tell. But let's go ahead and head out to the action on track in just a moment. As Marcel uh, Bigger uh, unfortunately has disconnected for the session, so hopefully he can get back in ASAP. But here we are at the fantastic Silverstone Circuit, the home of British motorsport. And see, I'm not going to lie, guys. 18 minutes doesn't seem long enough for me. It doesn't seem long enough. I want to be out there for at least, at least another hour of qualifying, surely. But... <laughs> We will see what times everyone is going to be doing as we've got the first group of cars coming out onto the track right now. And who will be the first man out on track? I believe it will be uh, Tony Rich uh, here for Team France. So we will stay on board with the Frenchman. Of course, coming in here tonight to defend their championship. They did take victory in Season 1. And they'll be looking to make it back-to-back -back, uh, repeat winners. And, of course, uh, Tony Rich, uh, an incredible driver in his own right as well, uh, had a couple of uh, very good uh, performances last time in uh, the European Esports Championship, but he has been overtaken by, I believe, uh, yeah, that was uh, Thomas Laminen uh, going there to be the, uh, the lead car, of course, for Team uh, Finland. And, yeah, I mean, this is going to be an incredibly... Uh, Incredibly intriguing a prospect here tonight. But yeah, let me know in the chat who are your favourites early on. Who's going to be uh, walking away with the most amount of points here tonight? And we will, we will, we will, we will rate everyone's predictions at the end of the session. Let us make sure that we got everything up that we need to get up now. And we'll we'll go on board with uh, Thomas Laminen uh, as he comes through Stow Corner. Now we're going to get a full flying lap here with the Finnish driver as he comes down in towards the Vale Shaking. And we'll have to get the best traction possible out of club. So... Let's go on a full lap here with Thomas Laminen as we cross the start finish down, down the Hamilton straight now in towards turn number one at Abbey, taking a lot of the inside curve through uh, Farm and now the first breaking zone at Village. Breaking down fourth gear, dropping down into third there at the apex as we go through uh, through the loop and of course uh, exiting uh, through Entry now on to the Weldon straight, DRS wide open of course heading down in towards the next break zone at Brooklands, but let's have a look at the first sector, 27.3 there for Tomlin Laminen as uh, we go through Brooklands in towards left field now as we get look for the best traction possible on the exit now through the right hand kink of Woodcut onto the National Straight and down in towards the old turn one at Cobbs Corner. Flat out through their maximum commitment there from Tomlin Laminen as we head now towards Maggots and of course in towards Beckett's and look for the best exit out of Chapel possible and DRS are wide open once again onto the Hangar Street as uh, we'll be seeing a lot of overtaking opportunities down here in towards Stowe breaking down throwing the car in fifth year there for Thomas Laminen and that is just a small invalidation there for Thomas Laminen and not ideal as 
it is unfortunate, but uh, yeah, I mean, no lap time on the board. But we'll go back on board with uh, Tony Arish. A 101.7 in the middle sector as we come through the Veil chicane. Now through a club uh, onto the Hamilton straight to the line. And it's going to be a 24.6 from the Frenchman to get us underway. But it's immediately beaten by Lightheart there for, of course, uh, Team Denmark uh, putting himself up there on provisional pole for the time being. Bogdan Moldova there up in the P3 for Team Romania. Good qualifying sort of from, lap from him as the uh, opening banker uh, begins to come in. On board with Volokongen right now, of course, for Team uh, Norway coming through the final few corners. What can the uh, Norwegian do as he comes to the line? It's going to be a 24.7. Just uh, gets, himself, uh, gets himself ahead of Bogdan Moldova in there. So it's going to be interesting, especially with uh, some of the national rivalries between uh, a couple of these uh, countries, of course. Uh, one of the infamous uh, rivalries, obviously, between uh, you know, the English and the French. But obviously, you look at the uh, the rivalries between the Finnish, the Danish, and obviously um, the Swedish, the Norwegians. Like that is a spicy, uh, a spicy rivalry right there between uh, those four nations in particular. Uh, as we're on board with uh, Marge uh, Krasnick uh, coming through the final sector now in towards the Vale Chicane through here the for. Uh, Marge as we come through the club section and cross the line 25.7 for him not ideal early on uh, Dylan Warren the, uh, the Englishman not had uh, the best of uh, first laps here fortunately for him I think he's had a, a bit of a uh, bit of a moment uh, somewhere of course uh, I mean, 30 seconds off the pace is not ideal so he definitely had a an instant out there on track as we got both of the Finnish drivers back out on a fresh outlap and we'll come back on board with them in just a moment in fact I think they might be uh, the first ones to uh, get their second ones underway so we'll go back on board with uh, Thomas Laminen as he is coming through Cops Corner now Ladies and gentlemen, my name is of course Michael Edwards. Uh, we'll be taking you through as uh, the solo commentator here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, but we will try to make sure that we capture all of the action possible and try to deliver the best show as we possibly can. As I believe uh, that was magic yeah, coming into the, uh, the pit. So uh, Thomas Laminen is going to be uh, going again. And let's see if this time he's going to be able to keep it on track and not step over the track boundaries and invalidate his run. Of course, we've got just over 10 minutes to go in the qualifying session remaining. Right now, it's uh, 16 uh, Leinart, uh, sorry, uh, Lind Hard, uh, currently on provisional pole position. Uh, he's currently up there. Could you hire up uh, qualifying volume a bit? Uh, yes, I can. I can do that if uh, if it is a bit quiet. I, I I can do that. Just a moment. Hopefully that is uh, a bit better now, and you guys can uh, hear me a bit more crisper. Uh, I tried to make sure that uh, the volume was good. I did test it before, and it seemed okay. But if you guys want it a bit louder, I will of course. Uh, be more than happy to accommodate but yeah on board with uh, Thomas Laminen now coming through Maggots Beckett and of course uh, in towards Chapel gonna be looking for the best run possible and of course with DRS gonna be pushing uh, pushing the boundaries of what we can see uh, going through still right now does keep it uh, all valid there as we come into the Veil chicane fourth gear the gear of choice there for Thomas Laminen and of course now through a club will this be a new provisional pole time no it's going to be p6 p6 for the finnish driver and of course uh kenden uh look there is going to be uh coming through the end of the lap now as he crosses the line and he just moves ahead of his teammate so uh 
Both of the finish drivers looking good right now up in P6 and P7. And... Okay, so... Uh, I, everyone, everyone happy with the the volume level? Lovely stuff. I did test it before, and it didn't seem uh, it didn't seem horrible uh, when I was testing it. So I mean, but always uh, happy to accommodate and obviously make myself a little bit louder uh, or make myself a little bit quieter. Either or. Uh, on board with Agonize, of course, the uh, Romanian coming through the first sector now. As it's a twenty-seven point one in the first sector. See. Gonna try to get a little bit of a toe off his teammate up ahead. This is actually a little bit of teamwork going on between the Romanian team and Bogdan giving the toe towards Agonize through. Oh, that is not gonna work as oh, they absolutely fluff it. The Romanian pairing, they did not time that well whatsoever. The closing speed from Agonize coming through uh, Cops Corner was. Uh, Absolutely horrible array uh, for Hagenize and Bogdan Moldova, and it definitely did not work out the way the Romanian pairing uh, wanted. But Hagenize is going to keep uh, keep going here, and let's see uh, what he can do. As Tony Rich for uh, Team France uh, puts it on provisional pull a 24.4, incredible lap time from him, and it's a 25.2 for Hagenize after making the contact through through cops with uh <laughs> with his teammate Bogdan Moldovan and Bogdan now gonna be getting a uh, a lap underway and I wonder if uh if we will be getting uh <laughs> the Romanian parent trying out a uh a bit of slipstream tactics again after what just happened just a moment ago obviously uh we just seen improvements say from Oscar of course uh Team Norway uh, driver moving up into P4, uh, putting his teammate down to P5. Bogdan Moldova now in P6 uh, as we head to the first uh, first sector split. And of course, uh, everyone in chat right now having a having a good uh, a good little uh, a good little summary of uh, the Romanian slipstream of which we just saw. But they are going to work it again down the uh, the national uh, pit straight uh, into the old turn one at Cobb's Corner. Now this is a lot. Better, but the uh, understeer just been in the dirty air. Bogdan Moldova and just overstepping the boundaries. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if I was uh, if I was uh, what's called Team Romania, I'd be working it on the uh, the hangar straight, not so much uh, the national straight. I'd be working the slipstream on the hangar straight. Uh, just uh, it seems like the more logical uh, place to go for. As it is now a Team France 1-2 as Noah Grosjean puts up there in P2. It is a French front row lockout right now as uh, Dylan Warren also uh, for Team England popping up into P4. So a good lap from him and of course uh, Team England will be looking for better than what they got last season. Uh, team Netherlands here. Uh, yet to set a, uh, a lap time here as we've got uh, Justin now uh, coming through the final sector. This will be the first lap time on the board for for the uh, Dutch team as we go through uh, the club section and it'll be Justin to the line up to P3 for the Dutchman, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, Lars is back into the pit, so I mean, it's a good lap here. As that, in fact, Dylan Warren has actually improved on his lap time. He's gone up in the P2. He has split the two French drivers. So, uh, I mean, England versus France? England versus France, guys. I mean, it has happened many times before in the past. Of course, the old great sporting rivalry between England and France. Uh, very, very well documented uh, in the past. Uh, who have we got on a flying lap right now? Of course, Royal Congan on a cooldown lap. we got... Kenan and Lute uh, coming through to begin his flying lap, and we have uh, Thomas Laminen there coming through uh, the loop, and of course, uh, Entry now on to the Wellington Straight. So we'll stay on board with, uh, of course, the Finnish driver uh, Thomas Laminen as we head in towards uh, Brooklands and now in towards Lafield. Can we look for the best traction possible? Guys, we've got just uh, over four minutes remaining in the session. Right now is Tony Arish 
for Team France on provisional pole position, collecting that first point of season two. And of course, England's uh, Dylan Warren in second place, joining him on the front row as it currently stands. Right now, Team France in a very strong position, uh, supporting the chart for the uh, the Finnish team uh, again. So a lot of support for Team Finland uh, this season. And I think that potentially could be like full disconnect right there. Uh, for uh, Thomas Lemon and that, that was a uh, very strange on board with uh, on board with the uh, the finish driver there. I think that potentially might have been a, a wheel disconnect or something. Uh, but yeah, a heartbreak there for uh, Thomas Lemon. But yeah, very interesting as uh, Kendon Lute also into the pit lane as well as we look uh, to see who is going to be setting a better lap time i'm going to go on board with uh with tony arish for this one of course uh the french one county in provisional pole position gonna be looking to extend his gap at the front of the field as we've got nordic ninja saying why always finland with the poor luck i mean we'll have to wait and see i mean they might still be able to get in a good lap at the end but uh yeah that that was very uh strange from uh thomas Lamanen, uh the but yeah, to me, it looked like a little bit of a, a disconnect and that maybe the wheel or controller just uh, just uh, slightly went away from him. But on board right now with Tony Reich as he begins his, I want to say, that obviously, the final run of the session for the French one. He's going to be looking to improve on his uh, his pole position time as he currently stands. We'll stay on board with him just to see uh, if he does improve. Of course, coming through uh, Village now through the loop and, of course, uh, looking for a good exit out of entry. On to the Wellington Street with DRS wide open, of course. Six hundredths of a second up on his time as it looks like uh, Grosjean up ahead. Going to be given the slipstream. In fact, actually, you no, know, he's just going to get out the way there. That was poorly timed and out from the two French uh, drivers. But, I mean, fair play. Oh! And Tony Rich there absolutely uh, blocked off at the uh, the apex of Cobb's Corner by uh, Victor Wilder there. Of course, uh, Sweden. Uh, so Sweden and uh, France uh, coming together. And not a uh, not high deal for them, but that'll definitely be uh, one for the stewards of both sides for sure. Meanwhile, on board with... Uh, with uh, ETA Oscar getting a nice little toe from Vola Congren, you're heading in towards uh, Brooklyn's and, uh, sorry, now in towards uh, Maggots and Beckett, as uh, Oscar now trying to take as much of the track as he possibly can, of course, with traffic there in uh, Maggots and Beckett as well, is uh, going to be uh, very interesting to see if he can improve. He's marginally up on his time right now, Bogdan Moldova with a five uh, place a grid penalty with a collision with uh, No Grosjean there. Here comes Oscar to the line and it's going to be P2 for Oscar as the Norwegians uh, get themselves onto the front row ahead of uh, the English driver as uh, Grosjean uh, just starting his lap. Of course, uh, Tony Rich is going to be uh, obviously not uh, very happy with uh, with the incident with uh, Victor Wilder there at the apex of uh, Cobb's Corner. And there'll definitely be some uh, words between those two after tonight's race, that is for sure as the checker flag is about to fall in the session so we'll stay on board with uh uh we'll stay on board with uh david uh Rockos as he comes through the uh the final couple of corners and let's see if the polish driver can get himself up the order and he's p15 right now he goes up in the p7 good lap time there Leo Lund right now for Team Sweden coming through and he's backed off. He's absolutely backed off as uh, Linus uh, Donovan uh, did not improve his position at the end as we have 
Uh, we have a red ball coming to the lane, of course. So we're going to stay on board. Uh, it's not going to be bogged down with Dolvin on a uh, fast lap. It's going to be Agonize, who is uh, down there in last place right now. And he's a tenth and a half up. And let's see if he's going to be able to find the time that he needs. Coming through the final corner now at the uh, club section. And he moves up ahead of uh, Maj Krasnik, but he is still in the lap, so he can still find time. As Dylan Warren for Team England, they are 24.3. England strike back at their home soil and currently in prime position to take that first point of the season. Dylan Warren for Team England on pole position. And let's see if anyone else is going to be able to displace him. No, that is it. Dylan Warren, Team England's very own at the home ground, at the home soil, does take pole position. And it was right at the end, right at the death of the qualifying session. Dylan Warren does uh, take the first point of the session. Uh, Tony Reese, of course, will not be happy with uh, Victor Welder. Uh, obviously, uh, I mean, as we mentioned and we documented already, uh, on the apex at, the, at Cops uh, in the way of uh, a hot lap. So, I mean, I mean, Tony Reese might be thinking he could have done better there, but it is... Team England taking the first point of the season at the home Grand Prix. At the home of British Motorsport, it is a Englishman on a pole position. Now, let's run you through the order. Guys, it is, of course, Dylan Warren, who did take a pole position with a 24.3, half a tenth ahead of uh, Tony Rich. We'll join him on the front row. ET8 Oscar in uh, P3 with uh, Noel Groshon in P4. Uh, Justin in P5 with uh, Leinhard in P6. Uh, David Lokos in P7. And of course, uh, Kendon Lut in P8. Linus Donovan in uh, P9 with Volo Kongen rounding up the top 10. Outside of the top 10, we had Matthew Bassett, Marcel Biega, uh, Bogdan Moldovan, uh, Thomas Laminen, uh, Leo Lund, Victor Wilder, Lars uh, Agonize, and of course, Madge Kresnik. Uh, hopefully I haven't absolutely butchered any of the names, but I do apologize if I have. Uh, we are going to just quickly uh, revert back to the uh, to the uh, camera screen for just a moment. I just want to quickly uh, check to see if uh, it will be a, uh, a restart. Uh, so yes, it will be a restart. But of course, what we have just seen, guys, is first blood to the English. On their home soil, Team England take the first point of the season. So already off to a much better start than uh, last season. And they'll be looking to carry this over through the rest of uh, through the rest of the qualifying session. Uh, sorry, not the qualifying session, through the rest of the season, I should say. As uh, Dylan Warren is uh, going to be starting from the front row. Matthew Bassett going to be starting from P11. It's going to be interesting to see if he can make his way through the field for Team England. Of course, I think the, uh, the big winners here in qualifying are, of course, uh, Team France with a P2 and P4. Uh, finish uh, respectfully uh, around here at the moment. Of course, uh, Team Norway with uh, Oscar and Volokongan in P3 and P10 are arguably the uh, in the second best spot. In fact, you know you might actually give it to England at that point. But uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very intriguing to see who is uh, going to be coming out on top. Of course, uh, we will be uh, going on to a, a quick intermission while uh, we get the new lobby set up and everything. Uh, very much appreciate every single one of you for uh, tuning in so far and of course the support you are showing your nation in the chat. Make sure you keep those uh, support uh, messages flooding in and of course let me know uh, who is going to win uh, this race. It is Dylan Warren on pole position, Tony Reich alongside him. Will one of them take the top step of the podium? Let me know, uh, guys, and keep your predictions flooding in. And we'll be back in just a moment with the brand new lobby.
Okay, guys, we are back. We've got the new lobby set up. And, of course, uh, we have a, a driver uh, stepping in as a reserve for uh, Uni Dovs. And, of course, uh, will be uh, Smith uh, stepping in for a Team Slovenia. So, yeah, it's uh, we got a full 20-man lobby. Of course, you'll be starting from the back of the field, uh, as you would expect. Again, let's have a little look at the uh, the circuit of which we are going to be racing at here tonight. Of course, it is the Silverstone circuit, 5.8 kilometers, 3.6 miles, 18 corners, two DRS zones, one down the world end, and one down the hangar straight. Key overtaking opportunities are down in towards turn number three at a village, of course, uh, turn number six at, of course, uh, Brooklands, and then, of course, uh, turn number 15 at uh, Stowe. It's going to be very interesting to see if we're going to see any uh, action in towards uh, in towards a cops. Uh, likewise, as well as of course the uh, the real chicane should be very interesting as the drivers are readying up and getting ready to jump on into the action. Uh, thank you for being with us as we had the a quick lobby uh, restart there and. Let's hope uh, for an incredible bit of action out on track. Of course, we have been given the green light to ready up, and we are loading into the uh, lobby itself. Of, co of course, the uh, the weather conditions are going to stay as close to the original lobby as possible. Of course, there will be uh, there will be unfortunate uh, things that, of course, will happen where, of course, it might the weather might change a couple of laps earlier, a couple of laps later. I don't particularly know what the weather conditions are going to be like, so we're going to stay uh, completely in the dark with uh, with this one, and we're just going to look forward to what should be an incredible race. 26 laps await these 20 drivers. 10 nations battling out for the top step of the podium. It is, of course, Dylan Warren, who uh, does have the, uh, the honour of being on pole position, collecting the first point of the season for Team England. And, of course, uh, England off to a great start here at their home Grand Prix. But let's go ahead and let's head out to uh, to the track itself so we do not uh, miss the uh, the start, making sure that everyone remembers their setups. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Remember your setups. Do not forget to load your setup because it can be absolutely horrible when you do uh, forget to load a setup. And we will see uh, if anyone uh, is paying attention to the stream. And, of course, I uh, will remember to load the setups. Of course, in the chat, uh, we got Alex Key saying hashtag Team uh, Tata. And then, of course, we got uh, support for uh, Finland as well in the chat. Uh, but it is Team England that did take the first point of the season. The pole position point is, of course, uh, is of course going to be going to England as we go to those five red lights to get us underway here for season two in the European Esports Championship. Lights are out and we are underway and a, a great start there from uh, Dylan Warren as we run down in towards uh, turn number one. But it is Tony Reach on the inside. Going to be able to get that position back. So they're going to be side by side in towards Village. The first breaking zone of the lap. And of course, Tony Reach. Oh, big, big contact in the back. It's his full right. Heading towards... Uh, Heading in towards the loop and uh, of course through entry now as there's a big mix up in the mid pack as uh, we see a Mercedes there off uh, in the distance uh, taking the running action that is for sure. A lot of different compound uh, strategies going on here as we see a few drivers on the set of the hards, uh, quite a few on the set of the mediums and a fair few on the set of soft tyres. As look at this, Marcel Viega getting absolutely swamped by both uh, Thomas Lamazon and of course uh, Lars there for uh, P12 and P13 as Marcel uh, falls on the order and I think potential wing damage there uh, for Marcel but uh, yeah, he's, yeah he's definitely wing damage he is struggling through uh, Maggots and Beckers now Victor Wilder gets through up in the P15 let's revert back up towards the uh, the action here as uh, Bogdan Moldova and looks for a move on David uh, Rockos as he tries around the outside of Stowe. Is he going to be able to pull this off all the way to the edge of the track? There's still beside the side in towards the breaking of the Vale Chicane. And Bogdan Moldovan still going to be there on the outside. Job done for Bogdan Moldovan up in the P9. As look at that. Uh, David there gets a little bit uh, 
put under pressure, a bad exit, and that's allowed Murphy Bassett to get through. Meanwhile, we got Justin and Linus Donovan uh, side by side. They're coming through. Oh, bit of contact there as Linus hits the back of Justin as Bogdan Moldovan tries to send it around the outside of the loop, but that is uh, not going to go down too well. ETA Oscar all over the back of uh, No Grosjean there for P3 in this race, of course, the French uh, pairing. MP1 and P3 right now. Good start to their campaign. Good start to England's campaign as well. Dylan Warren still in the fight on the set of the hard combat tires. It's going to do very well to stay uh, in this as Matthew Bassett has gone down the order. Massively, Matthew Bassett down the order. So while well, it's going well for one English driver, it's going bad for another. As Linus, that's, uh, that's Matthew back through. And of course, uh, we got Smith getting through as well. But look at this now. Linus back through on the inside, the side by side, in towards Maggots and Beckett. This is brilliant stuff. As it looks like it is going to be uh, Matthew Bassett uh, off in the background. There's a, a bit of contact made and a heartbreak for Team England and Haganize and uh, Marcel uh, having to make an early pit stop as well as uh, Lino Loud gets through on uh, Maj uh, Krasink uh, as they battle for P16. Tony Arish set in the new first lap, immediately beaten by Bogdan Moldovan, uh, who is currently up in P7. Leo Lund there now with the new fastest lap of the race. Of course, we are on lap three of 26. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what will be the dynamics once the RS is, comes into play, and we're going to see that right now as Dylan Warren on the set of the hard combat tyres doing a very good job right now for Team England. And he. I mean, you'd think with uh, no Grosjean and Oscar uh, on the set of soft tires, they'd be putting a lot more pressure. But look at this now. Uh, Kendon Luck uh, getting through on 16 uh, Lindhard as he goes up into P5. There, incredible stuff as uh, Bogdan Moldovan uh, sitting there in P7 just looking for an opportunity to try and squeeze through himself. Linus Donovan uh, dropping down the order as well, down into towards 17th place. Remember, top 15 get points, and of course, uh, there's the fastest lap point as well to play for. So it is worth uh, it is worth continuing on, even if you're not having the best of races. It is worth continuing on because you never know what could happen late in the session. It could be a late safety car and you jump up several positions, or it could be a case of you just pick up that fastest lap point and uh, walk away here with something. As uh, Volo Kongen and. Uh, Victor Wilder there side by side coming through the Vale chicane and now through the club section onto the Hamilton Street and it's going to be uh, Lars actually that uh, stays out ahead of uh, Victor Wilder so, uh, sorry I did say Volokongan uh, I saw Volokongan pop up at a position so I thought it was Volokongan and uh, Victor battling out but it was in fact uh, Lars and Victor battling out for P12 in this race and then we revert back up towards this battle for P5, probably the closest battle that we have on track right now. 6-10, lined hard uh, on the back of Kendon Lutt for P5, as again the, the change between uh, Victor Wilder and Lars for P12 in this race. Of course, the interesting thing around this circuit is uh, definitely... It, it does promote a lot of good overtaking opportunities. You can overtake around here pretty easily, but if you are battling side by side, you can lose a lot of time and drop outside the DRS range. And you can see the gap between uh, Victor and Volokongan, nine tenths of a second. So he is just about within DRS range, but that battle with uh, Lars definitely putting him under pressure. As you see, uh, a bit of a split happening uh, further down the back as we got uh, David and Justin side by side coming through slow corner. In towards the Vale Chicane now, Justin gonna look for a switch back here. This will be beautiful. He can pull it off, and this is absolutely fantastic from Justin, but unable to get the traction. David Lockers there maintains P8. Good going from uh, from David there. Incredible stuff. Kendon is closing in on Oscar here, having a look down the inside, in towards Brooklyn, so P4, and he is going to get it done, the finish man 
is finishing an overtaking manoeuvre and getting himself up into the top four. On his rival, of course, the Norwegian driver in Oscar. Meanwhile, we got uh, Dylan Warren here for Team England. All over the back of Tony Arish here, uh, the French driver. He's in a bit of a French sandwich right now, is Dylan Warren. Unfortunately, it's not gone the way for his teammate there, down in 18th place at the moment. But this will be a bit of a, a, a boost for the English fans here. As Dylan Warren takes the race lead, up into the race lead goes Dylan Warren. And job done for the Englishman. As uh, Thomas Laminen, guess who on uh, David Rockos as he's up into P8. Of course, if I remember correctly, uh, David Rockos is, uh, of course, uh, TF10 Baki. Uh, see a driver that we know very well on the PlayStation 2 years, making the jump over to PC now. So uh, I believe this might actually be his first, uh, his first race on PC, if uh, I'm not mistaken. And we will see uh, if he's going to be able to uh, adjust to the uh, the differences between console and PC uh, as well as uh, we would hope that he would. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Dylan Warren now into the race lead for Team England. we got uh, Tony Rich ahead of uh, Nor Grosjean there in P2 and P3 for Team France. Uh, P4 currently going the way of Team Finland's uh, Kenden Rudd. And then, of course, uh, P5 is the Norwegian of ET8 Oscar. P6 is, of course, uh, the the Danish uh, driver in uh, 610 Leinhardt. And then, of course, we got the Romanian of Bogdan Moldovan. And then, of course, the second of the Finnish drivers in Thomas Laminen. Then, of course, we have the Polish uh, driver. Uh, David Rockos, of course, uh, TF10 Baki uh, in P9, and then of course we have the Dutch driver, of course, of uh, Justin as Oscar. Oscar's falling down the order. Oscar's had a moment. Oscar is around. Oscar has had an absolute nightmare here in the Vale Chicane. I'm not sure if there was any contact between himself and uh, Kendon Lutt, but Oscar all the way down the order, down the 16th place. And on the back of Smith now, of course, stepping in as uh, Yone Dobson's uh, replacement here for Team Slovenia. And Oscar, is, uh, oh, he was looking so good for Oscar, but uh, that's how quickly things can change. And look at this, Bogdan Moldovan going to get through. On 16, Leinhardt, up in the P5 goes the Romanian. Of course, a very quick driver, as we did see in Season 1 of the European Esports Championship. And Bogdan Moldovan making his way up the order. Lap number 7 of 26. Dylan Warren still leads the way for Team England. There is a French 2-3 with uh, Team France's uh, Tony Rich and Noor Grosjean in second and third. Uh, Kendon Lutt for Team Finland in uh, P4. And of course Bogdan Moldovan now for Team Romania in P5. As Volokongan was getting close to the back of Justin there for P9, but not getting the best of runs out of uh, out of Chapel. We'll leave him under pressure from Victor Wilder, and he is going to get through. Uh, is Victor so up in the P10 goes uh, Victor? Of course, the uh, the Swedish driver moving up the order ahead of the Norwegian. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, the ten nations represented here in. The European Esports Championship. Of course, we have Romania, Finland, France, Netherlands, England, Slovenia, uh, Sweden, Poland, Norway, and of course, Denmark. They are the 10 nations that are, of course, represented uh, here in the European Esports Championship. As it looks like Tony Rich, very happy and content, just sitting in behind uh, Dylan Warren for the time being. Could have potentially had a little luck in towards. Uh, Brooklyn's but elected to sit in behind and of course uh, that will uh, that will just help uh, help save the battery a bit obviously uh, no goes on as well will be able to save his battery up as Kendon Lutt has absolutely used and deployed all of his battery and he's holding on for dear life in his DRS train and the thing is for Kendon if he loses DRS I think he's just going to fall back to uh, Bogdan Moldovan here uh, 
Kendon has no deployment left uh, to use as Dylan Rich, uh, sorry, uh, Dylan and Tony Richer's trade positions back into the race lead goes uh, Tony for Team France. So good going for him. Leo Lund getting through on the last day for P12. Maybe an early sign that these soft tyres are beginning to fall away. As Lazzi dropping down behind Leo for P12. Remember, the top 15 all get points here. As Agonized picks up a three second time penalty down in 19th place. Not going well for the second of the Romanian drivers. But his teammate Bogdan Moldovan currently up in P5. However, he is under pressure from 610 uh, Leinhardt. Of uh, course, uh, Thomas Laminen, uh, David Lockhorst, uh, they in P8. And of course, we got uh, Justin, uh, Victor Wilder, and of course, Volokongan all in this train for P5. And then, of course, uh, the top four are in a separate train. Just up the road, two seconds, one time down. We can change absolutely anything in the. Uh, in this uh, battle and of course lap number nine of 26 it is team france leading the way team england currently uh currently putting the pressure on with dylan warren but whether or not we'll see uh dylan be able to retake the race lead and hold on to it is going to be a different story in itself of course the hard tires will allow uh, dylan the flexibility of Choosing wherever tire he wants to go on. I presume he's going to stick on the set of the sauce towards the end. And Tony Rich now has a big, big decision to make. I think he'll try and stretch it out to the sauce. Uh, but yeah, big decision to make, especially with uh, Dylan's tires just going to get better and better over the course of this race. It could be strategy on point for Team England here. And we will have to see what happens. Uh, no Grosjean, they're doing a very good job uh, just sticking in behind. Uh, behind uh, Dylan Warren there for P2 as uh, Kenan Rutt tries to save up his battery. He's back up to around about 20% now and has to be uh, careful about where he uses it now. Uh, if I'm uh, Kenan, I'm literally just chilling in the back of that DRS train, saving the battery up and then uh, when I make a pit stop, then I'll start the push. That's a 610 line card. They're getting close to the back of Bogdan Moldova, but no move's going to happen there. But there is a move happening further down the order as Lars and Maj Krisnik uh, going side by side there through Brooklands. And it is, of course, the uh, Slovenian getting himself up into a P13. Oscar trying to make his way back up the order after whatever happened to him at the Vale Chicane. He's coming down in 15th place. Of course, uh, Matthew Bassett, of course, Team England's uh, second driver, down in 18th place after what happened to him at the start of the race. Same with uh, uh, Marcel Viega uh, and, of course, uh, Agonize, who uh, had to make early pit stops here at the end of lap one. As we're starting to see the first round of pit stops begin to happen now. Bogdan Moldovan, five seconds time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Not ideal for the Romanian. As uh, 610 uh, Leinhardt and David Lockhorst. Oh! Leinhardt's retired from the session. And he's left the session. What has gone on there? Ladies and gentlemen, the Danish driver has come into the pit lane. I didn't see no uh, time penalty picked up for him. But he's coming to the pits and retired from the session. I, I maybe maybe rear wing damage. I don't know. But uh, yeah, six ten uh, Linehart, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's heartbreaking. You hate to see it there from the Danish driver. He was in such a good position as well. I'm not sure whether it was uh, any form of uh, irreparable uh, damage here on the car. I think potentially uh, could have been some uh, rear wing damage for the uh, Danish driver. Hopefully uh, we can get a quick little uh, update on that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, uh, Nordic Ninja. I'm not entirely sure what happened. He came into the pit lane and retired from the session. I, I'm thinking maybe uh, potential uh, rear wing damage or maybe uh, maybe just a, a fault in terms of like a controller or wheel uh, or something like that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see and uh, see if uh, 610 does uh, jump into the stream and let us know exactly uh, what happened. Bogdan Moldovan has made his pit stop and this should be interesting to see where he comes out relative to Noah Grosjean. Remember, uh, Noah was in the train around about two seconds up the road 
from Bogdan Moldova. Let's see how good the undercut is here around Silverstone. Let's see if uh, the Romanian can get himself in the mix uh, with, of course, the, the French driver as Bogdan Moldova now coming through the veil chicane as Noah Gojon has been released on his garage. And I think uh, I think Gojon might just about stay ahead here, but it's going to be close on the exit. In fact, no, Bogdan Moldovan does t overtake uh, Noah Gojon here. So Bogdan Moldovan up into what is a net P3 now, maybe even a net P1. Obviously, he does have that five second uh, speed and pen, so let's uh, keep that in mind. And yeah, Bogdan Moldova now making moves and getting himself into a good position. And now we're going to see if Bogdan Moldova has the pace over Noor Grosjean here as those two uh, will be training lap times back and forth. Justin all over the back of Victor Welder here for P5 in this race. You've got Volo Kongen right in there behind. He is looking for an opportunity as well. But it is going to be Justin using DRS. Going to draw alongside Victor and he's going to get through down the inside in towards Stowe. Volokongan is there as well. And will any of them duck out into the pit? It will be uh, Justin into the pit lane. So this means uh, a set of mediums here for the uh, for the Dutch driver as he uh, jumps into the pit. set of uh, medium compound tyres should be going on that car. That is for sure. As uh, Dylan and uh, Kendon, the trading positions uh, for P2. Not what Dylan Warren wants in this race. He does not want to be battling with uh, with Kendon. But this kind of battling is allowing uh, Thomas Laminen to uh, close up somewhat. The gap 1.8 seconds between uh, both of the Finnish drivers here. As Rolla Conga now uh, has a free reign to try and get the overtake done on Victor Wilder. And if I'm Rolla Conga, I'm probably... Uh, I'm probably thinking, right, I'm going to get the overtake done here. Do my best to stay ahead, because I have I have maximum amount of ERS to deploy. So if I can stay ahead until the pissed off phase, I'm looking good. As we should be seeing the medium runners coming into the pits within the next, uh, I'm going to say in the next uh, couple of laps, of course, maybe for a set of the uh, soccer man tires. I think if they were going to come in for a set of hards, they would have already been in for those uh, hard tires. As Dylan Warren, Closes up, not going for the move there in towards so gonna sit in behind and play the patient waiting game here. Volkongen does get through up ahead of uh, Victor. Victor is now into the pit. This will be for a fresh set of uh, medium common tires as well. As we got Bogdan Moldova and getting through on Matthew Marset here. Up into uh, P said on track for Bogdan Moldova and of course uh, Matthew Bassett uh, he has made a pit stop in this race so that's not uh, that's not uh, completely rule him out uh, just yet uh, to cause a few issues because of course he might be thinking okay what can I do to help my teammate out what can I do to help out Dylan hold up the legs of uh, Grosjean uh, David Lockos and of course the legs in behind and if Matthew Bassett can hold up uh, Grosjean enough, that is going to be good enough for Team England in this uh, in this race. So in, I mean, it's not gone Matthew's uh, way so far, but he can play a massive part for his teammate here. However, that is not going to help Matthew at all lose now on DRS. But look at this now. No goes on. It's actually going to go for the move uh, before we get the cops corner. And that will allow uh, Matthew to gain back with uh, DRS as he's going to go side by side in towards Maggots and Beckett and backs out of it. Smartly done there from uh, Matthew Bassett to back out of that. But that has just compromised him massively, uh, especially with the worn tyres as well. And he's going to use ERS. He's going to use DRS. He's going to go to the inside. And this is exactly what Team England need. And oh, contact between the pair of them. Side pod contact between the pair of them. Grosjean and Matthew Bassett there. So reset the track for Matthew Bassett. But Grosjean and Matthew Bassett there coming together. France and England coming together. The rivalry continues between those two nations. As the top three are still 
uh, locked in a, a three-way battle. Uh, Thomas Laminen unable to close in as much as he would have liked. Of course, he's still 2.2 off the back. As uh, so we got uh, Maj Krasnik uh, on the back of uh, Leo Lund here for P6 in this race. Bogdan Moldova now potentially uh, can... He's potentially in a good spot now, Bogdan. Obviously, uh, with uh, Matthew Bassett uh, and the collision between himself and uh, Noah Grosjean, that gap now uh, between Bogdan and uh, Grosjean is now four and a half seconds which means he only needs to gain an extra half a second to make sure that he does not drop behind uh, Grosjean in terms of the uh, the five second time value and of course 3.8 is the gap between himself and uh, David Locos and that's going to be key to keep an eye on as well as we're starting to see uh, medium runners into the pits as uh, Laminen and Volokonga both dive into the pit lane and we will see what tyres these guys head on to in just a moment's time should be a set of the soft common tyres, of course the fuel will be a lot less now as compared to the start of the race, so they should be able to get a little bit more out of them. And of course the track getting quicker and quicker as both of them set a Red Bull soft common tyres. Let's see where they're going to come out to. They should come out, uh, I'm going to say behind, uh, they're going to come out behind Lars I think, Lars and Victor. In fact they might just go ahead as it's actually going to be quite close on the exit. And yeah, they're going to get out just ahead. Just ahead of the likes of uh, Lars and uh, Oscar. They're uh, battling for P14. Remember, Oscar had a big incident at the start of the race. So he's making the, his way back through. And he's doing a very good job right now of uh, carving his way back through. I think uh, technically he might be in a net, a net P10 in this race. I think he will get the jump on uh, Leo Lund, uh, Madge uh, Kresink and of course uh, Smith which will uh, climb up a couple of positions. And of course, with time penalties to four drivers ahead, definitely uh, could be interesting as uh, Volo Kongen and Thomas Laminen are going to be absolutely flying on those fresh soft tyres now. And when are we going to see the top three come into the pits? In fact, we're going to see them come in right now. Dylan Warren and Tony Rich into the pit lane. Last with a three second time penalty uh, down there in uh, P14. And we're seeing uh, Kendon Lutt stay out just a little bit longer. Dylan Warren and Tony Arish into the pit lane. And Nordic Ninja saying, I hope this strap works. And of course, uh, definitely referring to uh, Kendon Lutt, the, who's staying out that extra that extra lap. And he's using his ERS, which is exactly what he needs to do, minimize the uh, undercut as best as possible. But whether or not that will work or not remains to be seen. Fresh soft tires. For Dylan Warren and of course uh, Tony Reese and of course with the undercut from the likes of Bogdan Moldova, David Locos, Noah Grosjean, Justin, uh, Victor Wilder, Dylan and uh, Tony have come out down in 9th and 10th place respectfully. But Dylan is not wasting any time here. He's going for the move immediately on Victor Wilder down the inside in towards Brooklyn's job done on those fresh soft tyres. As now he's going to be all over the back of Justin, who had a bit of flash of uh, red on the back of that car. So Dylan knows he has the ERS advantage and he's just going to fly through. Now uh, down the inside in towards uh, Cops. Job done there for the Englishman as he moves up ahead of Justin. And now he's all over the back of uh, Noah Grosjean. And now we're going to see uh, teamwork uh, potentially coming in from the French pairing. As uh, Grosjean, he's not going to be able to actually hold off uh, Dylan. So Dylan through and up into uh, P, well, a net P2 now. As here goes Grosjean, Grosjean and David Locos has uh, collided there. And uh, 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 heartbreak for David and, uh, I mean, uh, Grosjean trying his best to stay with uh, Dylan Warren there to not lose touch of him. But in doing so, missed, missed timing is breaking in towards Stowe, collecting, uh, collecting uh, David Lockhart there, who was on for a brilliant result for uh, Team Poland. Heartbreak for them both. And now, I mean, both uh, Dylan Warren and Tony Reich now have uh, essentially broken away from the traffic. And Dylan Warren is going to be not particularly happy with that because that has just allowed Tony Reese to just follow him through however what it does do it drops uh, Grosjean down the order 
and potentially, potentially, if it does get reported by uh, by Team Poland, potentially could be a post-race uh, penalty as well. As uh, Kendon look, guess who on Victor Wilder up in the P8 goes uh, Kendon. But yeah, I mean, if that does get reported, I mean, it's going to be hard for uh, Grosjean to uh, to not have uh, to not have uh, to take the blame on that one. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Of course, that does mean now as uh, Justin there getting overtaken by both uh, Thomas Lamanen and of course uh, Volokongen. That does mean that uh, the door does open up a little bit more for uh, Dylan and Tony in terms of uh, in terms of this race, because of course now the race win means a little bit more. Obviously, when it was a double podium uh, for Team France, obviously we knew France were going to take the lead as Dylan Warren gets through down the inside in towards a village. Job done for him up into P1 in this race, and now needs to try and pull that one second gap on. Tony Arish, who is yet to get through on uh, Bogdan Moldovan as of yet. Team England currently lead the way. Dylan Warren, your race leader. The Englishman at his home Grand Prix here at Silverstone. In the English countryside, of course, uh, for the uh, British Grand Prix, Dylan Warren leads the way after getting pole position here, uh, taking the first point of the championship and will be looking to take as maximum points as he can in this race. Bogdan Moldovan currently second for Team Romania, but has a five second time penalty. And right now we got uh, the reigning champions in Team France's uh, Tony Arish going down the inside, getting P2 on track now proper as we have Kenden and uh, Thomas Laminen, P4, P5 for Team Finland. Off to a great start, the uh, the Finnish team, especially after what happened last season uh, to them, where unfortunately at the end of the season they just were not able to uh, to uh, let's go get through at the end. And seeing they ended up with a wooden spoon, but I mean it's a good start so far if you are uh, English or Finnish. Uh, much better than uh, last season, that is for sure. But it is, of course, uh, Dylan Warren who is currently leading the way. Matthew Bassett with a three-second time penalty. Not ideal for him. He's down in 18th place. No uh, no points for Matthew Bassett. So potentially going to be thinking about going for that fastest lap point at the end of this race. And we're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see who gets that fastest lap as well. Because I can imagine, uh, essentially, uh, Linus Smith... Matthew, uh, Marcel and Arknight are all going to be battling out for it. We've had one retiree from this race so far, and that is 610 Leinhardt. We're not too sure exactly what happened to him, but uh, the the Danish driver came into the pit lane and just retired from the race itself. And... Yeah, we have to, we have to wait and see what happens uh, there. But Tony Reich getting onto the back of Dylan Warren. It's going to be France versus England for the race win. Romania involved as well with Bogdan Moldova. He does have that five seconds, so he's not actually in the best position to take the race win. But he can definitely decide who wins this race. That is for sure. Kendon Lutt trying his best to close in for Team Finland. And trying to drag his teammate uh, Thomas Laminen along for the ride. Volokongan there in P6 for Team uh, Norway as he is uh, trying to get through. Of course, uh, Nordic uh, Ninja talking about the, uh, the strategy from uh, Kendon Lutt. And of course, uh, we got Tater coming through saying that uh, he started in P8. So, I mean, making positions in a, in a grid like this is definitely uh, definitely not a failure, in my opinion. So, uh, he definitely could be uh, on for a, a good result here. And obviously, a good result for Finland in fourth and fifth place, respectfully. Uh, we got Ansa yeah, saying uh, good evening, good evening Ansa, how are you doing mate, how are you doing? Uh, we are on lap 21 of 26, Dylan Warren for Team England leads away, but you got the Frenchman, 
Tony Arish there closing in around the outside of Stowe. Incredible stuff there from Tony. Job done. And I think maybe a little bit of gamesmanship there from Dylan Warren. Maybe just backing off slightly, allowing Tony to take the race lead so he can get uh, so he can get himself back in it uh, at the end. But now look at this. As Kendon Lutt, Thomas Laminen, and now Volokongan all in this battle, in this train for the race win. Right now, Tony Rich and uh, Dylan Warren uh, currently lead this train. You got Bogdan Moldovan, who's a very quick driver, but he has a five second time now. He's on mediums as well. So he has a uh, a bit of a uh, a deficit to the uh, the other drivers around him, but he can definitely uh, cause, uh, they definitely decide who's gonna win this race. That is for sure. As look at that, Ken then now having a little look all over the back of Bogdan Moldovan and Team Finland are looking very good here as Kendon is all over the back of Bogdan with that five second time penalty for Bogdan Moldovan uh, Team Finland will move up in the P3 and P4 respectfully but they want more they want a double podium here at Silverstone will they be able to achieve this that is going to be the question lap 22 of 26 as we come to the end of lap 22 about to begin lap 23 Dylan is not going to go for any move on Tony as of yet. We're going to see DRS Chicken uh, begin to be played out there between the French and the Englishman. And Bogdan Moldovan, honestly, he, he's not really in the battle for the uh, the race win. He's in a battle right now to stay ahead of uh, Justin that's down in P8. And we'll see uh, if he is going to be able to do that. But yeah, everyone bunching up now towards the end of the race. Lap 23 or 26. Tony Reich leads the way. Dylan Warren in second place. Bogdan Moldovan in third. Kendon Lutt in fourth. But down the inside is Kendon Lutt as they go side by side through uh, the loop and on tree onto the Wellington straight. They're still wheel to wheel. The finish and the Romanian driver still wheel to wheel side by side in towards Brooklyn's and a little bit of contact there as they go through uh, Brooklyn's in towards left field but Kendon look they losing out to his teammate in Thomas Laminen and Bogdan the uh, elbows out as he uh, as he's trying to play spoiler in this race and uh, we'll see if he's going to be able to do that and uh, We'll see what uh, what goes on here as Thomas Laminen now uh, going to be the next man up to try and get the overtake done on Bogdan Moldova. Remember, he does have seven lap old soft tyres, but it doesn't matter. He's got the run. He's got the ERS. He's got the DRS. Up in the P3 goes Thomas Laminen there. And it is Finland now up into the podium position. Agonise retires from the race into the pit lane. He comes as Kendon look there. I think that's Bogdan uh, allowing uh, Kendon through. Uh, after that bit of contact, so a bit of sportsmanship there for Bogdan Moldovan uh, to uh, drop the position. And yeah, I mean, Bogdan Moldovan uh, now uh, he's going to have a phone in the side of uh, a Norwegian by the name of Vola Kongan, who is going to be uh, looking to get a move down. But this has just made the top four battle extra spicy because you've got uh, the defending champions is. Uh, the French team, of course, Tony Reese representing Team France. You've got the hometown hero, the homegrown hero, Dylan Warren here, looking to take a victory here at his home Grand Prix for Team England. And then you've got uh, the Finnish appearing of Thomas Lemonen and, of course, Kendon Lutt, who are going to be uh, looking to try and make us a double finish podium, maybe even a 1-2 for Team Finland, as they'll be able to work together as a team. Lap 24 of 26. It is getting interesting now towards the end of this race. And here goes Thomas Laminen. He's going to look for the move. And he's forced uh, he's forced Dylan to maybe have a little look on uh, Tony Reese as well. And look at this now. They're battling side by side on the exit of Stowe. And Dylan Warren does not want to overtake uh, Tony just yet but by staying behind and not going for the overtake he's left himself vulnerable to the finish drivers of Thomas Laminen there and now has uh, Kendon Lutt in behind him as well as look at this now Dylan Warren 
he can't get through. He's kind of boxed in there around the outside of a village in towards the loop and unable to get it done there. And this could be the run that Kendon Lutt needs. Is it going to be heartbreak for Team England here? As Dylan Warren, the homegrown hero, the hometown kid, is he going to fall out of the podium positions here? It's looking like it could be so. If Kendon gets the traction he needs on the outside here of Luffield. Now through Woodcut, they're still side by side up ahead. Tony Reach and Thomas Lamelin, And they're side by side in behind. Free wide in towards Corpse. This is not going to end well. Oh my god, uh, Kendon able to uh, able to avoid uh, catastrophe right there. We're on the penultimate lap of the race. Thomas uh, Thomas Lamelin now leads the race, but uh, Tony Reach is in the best position with uh, being second in this train with DRS. But look at the run that Dylan Warren gets for Team England. He's going to try to get this move done as it looks like it's going to be... Oh, well, Thomas Lamelin back on the inside. They're still side by side. In behind, Volok Hongren's actually got through. On Kendon Lutte as well in the background. Dylan Warren now back up in the P2. And Team Finland getting very mixy with uh, France and England's uh, Tony Rich and Dylan Warren here as we're on to the last lap of this race. And ladies and gentlemen, everything to fight for. It will be Dylan Warren who will have the benefit of a DRS. In terms of the ERS, uh, it is Dylan Warren with the advantage there as well as uh, Thomas Lamelin is not wasting time. He's sending it down the inside and oh, it's so close between the pair of them. They rub wheels together and this is not what Dylan Warren wants. He's been squeezed off towards the exit of, uh, of Entry. But he has to try and get back through into P2 around the outside of Brooklyn's. Will go Dylan Warren but he's unable to get through again and we'll have to look uh, for the exit of Luffield. This is getting very, very tasty on the final lap of this race. I have no idea who's going to be able to take the victory here. As it looks like Tony Reach is, uh, <laughs> is literally uh, trying not to be the first man with that final dose of DRS. But he is going to be the first man with the final dose of DRS. And that is what Dylan wants to see. That is what Dylan Warren wants to see. The flash of battery on the back of Thomas Lamanan. But is he too far away from Tony Reach as we come on? to the hangar straight for the final time in this race. Dylan Warren is going to retake P2, but he's not going to be close enough to go for the race lead. It's going to be Team France that will be on the top step of the podium. Tony Rich, the LC for Team France, is going to come through to take victory here in Silverstone. Dylan Warren, second place for Team England. <coughs> Incredible drive from him. Thomas Laminen there, P3 for Team Finland. Vola Kongan, P4 for Team Norway. And Kendon Lutt there for P5 for Team Finland as well. And then of course, uh, Justin did manage to get the jump on Bogdan Moldovan in the end. So Justin, P6, Bogdan Moldovan in P7. Victor Wilder, P8. Uh, Leo Lund in P9. Oscar, running at the top 10. Uh, Marge Krasin uh, in P11. Uh, David Lockers in P12, Lars in P13, No Grosjean in P14, and then uh, Linus Donovan taking the uh, the final point in position at the end uh, in P15 with our drivers outside of the uh, outside of the points. Of course, Smith, uh, Marcel uh, Biega, and of course, uh, of course, uh, Matthew uh, Bassett. Uh, there, of course, uh, Leo Lund uh, did lead the session before. The last car crossed the line, so it has uh, it has put him down towards the uh, the back. But let's uh, not forget uh, that uh, he has finished inside the points. So uh, we will, of course, be uh, making sure that we get that up in just a moment's time. But ladies and gentlemen, what an end to that race we have just witnessed! Incredible uh, battle between the top three. It got elbows out all the way to the end. But it was Tony Arish that does pick up the race win. The first victory of the season goes the way of Team France. Dylan Warren, so close for Team England. But he can hold his head high uh, after tonight's race because he absolutely did an incredible job for Team England there. And no shame in coming, uh, in coming second. Uh, obviously, with the battling that was going on there, Dylan Warren able to get retake uh, P2 away from Thomas Lamelin, and it was a great result for 
uh, England in the end. But Thomas Lamanon completes the podium there as well. Incredible, incredible uh, race uh, at the end there. But let's run you through the order one more time. It is, of course, uh, Tony Rich for Team France, who uh, does take a victory here in Silverstone. Dylan Warren for Team England completes uh, his uh, pole to P2 uh, in second place. Thomas Lamanon in P3 with Volkongen in P4. Kendon Lutt in P5 with Justin in P6. Bogdan Moldovan in uh, P7. Uh, Victor Wilder in P8. Then it would be Leo Lund in P9 with Oscar in P10. Maz uh, Kresnik in P11 with David Locos in P12. Lars in P13 with uh, Neo Grosjean in uh, P14. Uh, Linus Donovan in P15. And our non finishers were, of course, uh, Smith and. Uh, sorry, uh, our non points paying finishers were, of course, Smith, uh, Marcel Biega, uh, Matthew Bassett. And our two uh, non finishers were, of course, Agonize and, of course, uh, 610 Line the Heart. And that, of course, uh, brings an end to the action here in Silverstone. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are in for a absolutely incredible uh, championship uh, season up ahead. I mean, if race one with anything to go by, it's going to be very spicy for the remainder of the season. And of course, uh, speaking of the season, let's have another look at the calendar. Of course, we did see it earlier, but let's have another look once again as it is going to be round number two uh, next week as we head to the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for the Spanish Grand Prix. And then, of course, round number three in a fortnight's time, we head to the Hungar Ring for the Hungarian Grand Prix before round number four, the Temple of Speed. It is, of course, a Monza, the Italian Grand Prix. And then, of course, uh, Belgium, Spa, Francochons, round number five. And, of course, the Red Bull Ring uh, for round number six in the Austrian Grand Prix. And, of course, we end the season uh, with Imola, round number seven, 14th of May, the season finale in Imola. And honestly, it's going to be an incredible, incredible season uh, of action. Great start for Team Finland early on. Uh, confidence there for obviously uh, Team France and Team England. They can definitely be up there uh, at the front end and competing. Uh, obviously, Team Norway are going to be in the mix as well. Volokongan had a great race. Also, uh, Bogdan Moldovan will feel that. Uh, Unfortunately, with that time, five second time penalty at the end, it did just cost him. But he'll know he's got the pace to be up there for Team Romania. Now, the question will be who is going to be the consistent teams at the end of the uh, at the end of the season. And of course, uh, one thing that I will do as well, I will bring up the point system also, so you guys can see. Uh, it is, of course, the top fifteen that get points: twenty-two points for the race win. 18 points for uh, P2, 15 points for P3, uh, 12 points for P4, and then in increments of one, they go down. So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one singular point for 15th place. And then the remaining five teams, uh, five drivers, do not get a point uh, if you are 16th or below. But there is a point for the pole position, which of course was collected today by Team England. And of course, the fastest lap of the race, and I'll quickly, uh, I'll quickly have a little, uh, have a little look and see who did pick up the uh, the fastest lap in the end. As I believe, um, I believe it actually might have been uh, one of the drivers outside of uh, outside of the points that did pick it up in the end. I believe uh I believe I didn't actually catch who got the fastest lap in the end. So uh we'll have to wait and see uh who did get the fastest lap. I'll, I'll have a quick uh a quick look as well to see if uh if at the end of the race it did pop up with the fastest lap. Uh but Matthew Bassett uh was the uh the last man uh to cross the line and I didn't see purple uh times from anyone else, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, if Matthew did pick up the fastest lap at the end, he might have done uh, for Team England, which obviously would save him a point. But yeah, um, 
we will we'll find out who did get the fastest lap point uh of course uh after the uh after the stream of course but ladies and gentlemen that's going to bring an end to the opening round here of the european esports championship it was team france's tony Rich who did take victory dylan warren for team england coming through in second place and of course uh team finland's thomas laminen uh completing the podium and obviously getting team finland off to a fantastic start ladies and gentlemen i have been michael edwards and i'll catch you next week for round number two as we head to the circuit de barcelona catalonia but until then guys it is goodbye from me goodbye